Hey, I'm Emily. Since I was little, mom and dad, who never got past high school, scraped together what little they could for my college fund. They worked their butts off, believing education was my ticket to a better life. I busted my tail in high school, also I wouldn't let their sacrifices go to waste. When I got my acceptance letter to study investment management at one of the top colleges, we all cried tears of joy. My college days were hectic, but exciting. I juggled classes and a part-time job tutoring to keep some cash in my pocket. That's how I met Mark. He was a year behind me, kinda struggling with the coursework, and ended up being assigned to me for extra help. Look, I just don't get this stuff, he'd say, scratching his head and staring down at the finance books like they were written in another language. You will, I told him. Just break it down into smaller pieces. Don't try to swallow it whole. Mark was easygoing with a quick smile that made the late-night study sessions less of a grind. He appreciated my help, and we hit it off, chatting about everything from music to our favorite TV shows. It wasn't long before those study sessions turned into coffee outings, then movie nights. One night, we were both at a college party, laughing over cups of cheap beer. You know, M, I've always wondered why someone as smart as you hangs out with a dunce like me, he joked, nudging me with his elbow. Guess I have a thing for lost causes. I shot back, elbowing him right back. We both laughed, and something about that night felt different. Maybe it was the buzz of the party, or just the right amount of beer, but I felt myself looking at him differently. We stumbled out of the party together, leaning on each other, half walking, half dancing down the street. So, what do you say, M? Wanna make this a regular thing? Mark slurred, his words sloppy, but his eyes serious. I remember laughing, the sound loud in the quiet night. Are you asking me out, Mark? Yeah, I guess I am, he said, and there was a challenge in his tone, like he dared me to say no. All right, you've got yourself a deal, I replied, and we shook on it, sealing our goofy pact with a high five that turned into us holding hands as we walked. Things with Mark felt natural, easy, like slipping into an old, comfortable pair of jeans. We finished college together, me with my degree that was supposed to open doors, and him just relieved to be done. Our relationship wasn't just built on love, it was built on a deep friendship, the kind you don't find every day. After we tied the knot, things kicked off pretty well for me career-wise. I landed a killer job right out of college, thanks to my knack for numbers and a bit of hustle. The pay was good, the benefits even better. Mark, though, wasn't having the same luck. He bounced around job interviews like a pinball, each time coming home a bit more deflated than the last. One evening, I came home late to find him slouched on the couch, staring blankly at some job postings on his laptop. Any luck today? I asked, dropping my bag and kicking off my shoes. He glanced up, a forced smile, not quite reaching his eyes. Nah, same old, same old. I guess I'm too stupid. Hey, don't talk like that. You're just in a rough patch. I squeezed his hand, trying to transfer some of my optimism to him. Look, why don't you take a break from this? Let's go grab a bite. My treat. Mark closed his laptop with a sigh. Sure, why not? Not like I've got interviews lining up or anything. We ended up at a small diner around the corner, a place we frequented when we first moved in together. As we slid into our usual booth, Mark's mood seemed to lift a bit. The waitress, a middle-aged woman with a no-nonsense attitude, came over to take our order. The usual for you too, she asked, popping her gum. Mark grinned. Yeah, and keep the coffee coming, Judy. It's been one of those days. Coming right up, hun, she shot back with a wink. While we waited for our food, I watched Mark play with the sugar packets, lining them up and knocking them down like dominoes. You know, maybe this is a sign, he said suddenly. Maybe I'm not cut out for these corporate gigs. Maybe I should think outside the box. I leaned in, curious. Like what? I don't know, something hands-on, something real. Not just shuffling papers and pleasing bosses. You'd be great at that. I said, meaning every word. You're good with people, Mark. 
maybe something in sales? Mark chuckled, his eyes lighting up a bit. That might be a good idea. The conversation drifted as our food arrived, but I could tell something had sparked in Mark. For the first time in months, he seemed to consider the possibilities rather than dwell on the failures. It took a good while, but finally, he snagged a position. Not the dream job by any stretch, and the paycheck? Well, it was nearly half of what I was pulling in. I didn't mind the disparity, I was just glad he found something. But Mark, he took it hard. You could see it ate at him, being the one who brought less to the table. I just never thought I'd be the one being supported, he admitted one night, his voice low, almost drowned out by the hum of the microwave in our tiny kitchen. Hey, it's us against the bills, not you against me. I tried to reassure him, passing him a beer. We're a team, right? Yeah, a team, he echoed, but his half-smile didn't reach his eyes. Over time, though, he seemed to get used to the setup. The weight of paying rent, groceries, and everything in between fell on my shoulders, and I handled it without a fuss. I even splurged on him now, and then, fancy gadgets, the kind of clothes he wouldn't buy for himself. Mark got cozy with this arrangement, real cozy. Started pointing out stuff in stores, saying, Hey, that would look great on me, huh? I laughed it off, clouded by love, thinking this was just playful banter between us. My colleagues at work saw it differently. He's getting a bit too comfortable, don't you think? They'd hint after I shared stories over lunch. I shrugged off their concerns, figuring they just didn't see the full picture of our marriage. He's been through a rough patch, it's my turn to spoil him a bit. I'd defend him, keeping my tone light. Just when I thought we had our lives on a steady track, the unexpected whacked us upside the head. The investment firm where I was making waves suddenly crashed, bankrupt, out of the blue. I came home that day, my head spinning, papers from HR, clutched in my shaky hands. Mark, you won't believe what happened, I said as soon as I walked through the door. I was met with the sight of him on the sofa, gaming controller in hand, mid-game. He paused his game and looked up, brows knitted. What's up, babe? The company, they're done. Bankrupt. I'm jobless. He sat up straighter, the seriousness of the situation, cutting through the usual homecoming chit-chat. What? But you were just talking about a promotion last week. Yeah, well, so much for that. I tossed the papers on the coffee table, a mix of severance info and legal jargon. Everything's gone to hell, just like that. Mark set his controller down and came over to me, his expression a mix of concern and disbelief. Emily, that's, that's crazy. What are you gonna do? I sank into the couch, the weight of the news anchoring me down. I don't know. I need to start looking, I guess. But who's gonna hire someone from a tanked firm? It's like I've got the plague now. He rubbed my back, trying to be the rock I needed then. You'll find something. You're brilliant. Any company would be lucky to have you. But weeks turned into months, and every interview ended with some version of we'll be in touch, which really meant don't hold your breath. The rejections piled up, slamming me with doubt and worry. One evening, after yet another, thanks, but no thanks, I vented to Mark over dinner. It's like I'm toxic, Mark. Today, one guy actually said, sorry, but we can't risk someone associated with that kind of failure. As if I personally ran the company into the ground. Mark shook his head, stabbing at his food. That's bull. They don't know what they're missing. Yeah, well, apparently they think they're dodging a bullet. I muttered, pushing my own food around my plate. Then the bills started to grow, a monstrous pile that seemed to taunt us from the kitchen counter. Each envelope a reminder that my savings wouldn't last forever. Mark tried to pick up extra hours, but it wasn't enough to keep up. One night, as I was crunching numbers, trying to make sense of our dwindling finances, Mark came into the kitchen, a sheepish look on his face. So, um, about the bills. I didn't even look up. What about them? He shuffled his feet, a sure sign he was nervous. Well, it's just... You know I'm not pulling in much. Maybe we should cut back some more. Maybe we could move to a smaller place? Or sell the car? 
I stared at him, the reality of our situation washing over me in a cold wave. We're really in it, aren't we? Mark nodded, coming over to wrap his arms around me. We'll figure it out, M. We always do. Weeks of fruitless job hunting ground me down, each day chipping away at my savings and hope. The money was running out fast, and Mark, who had grown used to a comfortable life, now shouldered all our bills. This shift brought out a side of him I'd never seen before. One night, he exploded. You're just sitting around all day, doing nothing. I'm out there, busting my ass, and for what? To come home to a freeloader? His words stung. Freeloader? Really, Mark? Who do you think kept us afloat all these years? I shot back, my voice sharp with hurt and anger. He just scoffed, shaking his head. Yeah, well, past's past. What are you doing now? Nothing. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This wasn't the man I married. But before I could gather my thoughts to respond, the real blow came just a few days later. I came home early to grab some documents I needed for yet another potential job lead. As I opened the door, I froze. There was Mark in our living room, cozy with a woman I'd never seen. She was draped on his arm, laughing up at him like she owned the place. Mark straightened up, clearing his throat. This is Anna. She's, well, she's going to be my wife. The woman, Anna, looked me over with a smug grin. He needs someone young and beautiful, if he's going to spend his money. Not someone who can't even keep a job. They laughed together, a sound that burned into my memory. I felt my heart shatter, rage and disbelief swirling into a toxic cloud in my chest. Then Mark did the unthinkable. He pulled out a stack of papers from behind him. Here, divorce papers. I think it's time you moved on, Emily. Without saying another word, I took the papers. My hands shook as I signed them, each stroke of the pen severing the last ties I had to the man I once loved. I packed my things, my movements robotic. As I zipped up my suitcase, Mark and Anna didn't even pause their celebration. The contrast between their laughter and the tight, painful lump in my throat was too much. Walking out of that apartment, suitcase in hand, felt like stepping into a void. I had no job, no husband, and suddenly, no home. The morning after I left Mark, I woke up early, feeling displaced but determined to start over. I had spent the night at a cheap motel, the kind where you pay cash and no one asks questions. I knew I needed a plan, fast. After a stale coffee and a dry muffin from the motel's vending machine, I walked the streets, aimlessly at first. Then, I remembered a beauty salon nearby, a place I used to frequent back in better days. The owner, Linda, had always been kind to me. Maybe, just maybe, she had some work, anything really. Linda was at the counter, her back turned, stocking some shelves. Can I help you? She called out without looking. Linda, it's Emily. I, I was wondering if you had any work available. Anything at all, I said, my voice a mix of hope and desperation. She turned around, her face lighting up with recognition, then concern. Emily? Honey, what happened? You look like you've been through the ringer. I sighed, the story spilling out of me, the job loss, Mark's betrayal, the divorce. She listened, her expression softening with each word I said. Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Let's see what we can do for you. She pondered for a moment, tapping a finger on her lips. You know, I need someone to help manage the front desk, answer phones, schedule appointments. You think you could handle that? I nodded eagerly. Yes, absolutely. I'd be grateful for any opportunity, Linda. She smiled, her warm, reassuring self. Good. Why don't you start tomorrow? We'll figure out the rest as we go. And hey, about a place to stay, the apartment above the shop is empty. It's not much, but it's clean and safe. You can stay there for half the rent until you're back on your feet. I was overwhelmed, tears pricking at the corners of my eyes. Linda, I, thank you. This means so much to me. None of that now. She waved off my thanks. You'd do the same in my shoes. Let's not make it a big deal. Just be here at 8 tomorrow, 
bright and early. The next few weeks were a blur of learning and adjusting. Linda showed me the ropes, and I picked up the nuances of the beauty industry quicker than I thought. It was like I was slowly piecing myself back together, finding a new purpose in a place I hadn't expected. Mark and my old life seemed like a distant memory, a bad dream that had loosened its grip on me. I worked hard, stayed late when needed, and slowly, I began to feel whole again. But it wasn't just about surviving anymore, I was starting to thrive. Linda noticed too. Emily, you've really turned this place around, she said one evening as we were closing up. I'm thinking about expanding, opening another location. What do you think about running this one for me if I do? The offer took my breath away. Really? Linda, are you serious? As a heart attack, she chuckled. Think it over. No rush. As I walked up to my little apartment above the shop, I realized that this, right here, was my fresh start. My chance to rebuild not just my career, but my life. Running the beauty salon started to feel like second nature. Every day, I put in all I had, and Linda noticed. One morning, as we were gearing up for another busy day, she came in with her usual spark. Morning, M. How's our little empire doing? Linda grinned, checking the schedule packed with appointments. Booming, I replied, flipping through the day's bookings. We might even need to think about hiring more hands soon. That's what I like to hear, she said, clapping her hands with excitement. Actually, that's kinda what I wanted to talk to you about today. Oh? What's up? I asked, curious about the tone in her voice. Linda motioned towards her office. Let's step into my lair, for a sec. Once we were settled behind closed doors, Linda leaned forward, all business. Look, Em, you've made this place shine. I've been thinking a lot about how we can grow, not just here, but really expand our reach. I felt a mix of nerves and excitement. Are you talking about opening another location? Not just another salon, Em. I'm talking big. I'm planning a whole network of salons, and I want you in on it, not just as a manager, but as a co-owner. We'd split everything 50-50. Her words hit me like a wave. Co-owner? I echoed, the weight of the offer sinking in. Yes, Linda nodded firmly. I've seen what you can do, and I trust you. You're ready for this, and I want us to tackle it as partners. What do you say? The possibility of stepping up like this was both thrilling and daunting. I, well, Linda. I'm honored. And yeah, a bit freaked out. Linda laughed, that hearty sound that always put me at ease. Good. A little fear keeps you sharp. Think about it, but I'm serious. We could make a real go of this. We hashed out some preliminary ideas right there, brainstorming into the afternoon. The thought of co-owning a business was huge, but with Linda by my side, it felt possible. The next few weeks, I dove into preparations. Hiring, training new staff, and overseeing the salon operations became part of a larger plan. Our clients noticed the positive changes, and the buzz was infectious. Linda and I spent evenings at a local cafe, laptops open, plans sprawling across the table. We talked leases, decor, branding, every detail of our expansion. Finally, the day came to announce our plans to the staff. Everyone gathered around, excited and a bit anxious about the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda started, her voice brimming with pride, Thanks to your hard work, and especially Emily's leadership, we're expanding. And Emily here isn't just going to be your boss. She's going to be my partner in this venture. We're in this together. The team cheered, and I felt a swell of pride and determination. This was my shot, our shot, to build something lasting. It had been seven years since the divorce, and life had moved on. I was in one of my salons, chatting with Mrs. Peterson, an elderly client who loved getting her hair done here every month. We were laughing about something trivial when the door swung open, and there he was, my ex-husband, Mark, with Anna, the same woman he had left me for. I stiffened, but before I could say a word, Mark burst out laughing, loud enough for everyone in the salon to hear. Look at this, Emily has become just a simple hairdresser. What a waste of all that fancy education. 
Anna chimed in, her voice dripping with disdain. Yeah, what a total loser. Guess the high-flying job didn't work out, huh? The room fell silent, the air thick with tension. I felt every eye in the place on me, waiting to see how I'd respond. But before I could gather my thoughts, Mrs. Peterson stood up from her chair, her cape still draped around her. She pointed a manicured finger at them, her voice sharp as a tack. You two ought to shut your mouths. This woman here, she waved her hand at me, owns not only this salon, but a whole chain of them. She was just named one of the most successful young entrepreneurs in the country. Mark's laughter died in his throat. He looked like he'd been slapped. Anna's face went from mocking to shocked in an instant. And another thing, Mrs. Peterson continued, her eyes narrowing. I live next door to you clowns. Mark, you're hardly ever sober, and you get fired from your job so often it's a wonder you have any work at all. Mark's face turned beet red, from embarrassment or anger, I couldn't tell. He grabbed Anna's arm, muttering something under his breath about leaving. As they headed towards the door, Anna suddenly whirled around and stormed back in, Mark trailing helplessly behind her. I want my hair done here, and I want you to do it, Emily, Anna declared, standing defiantly in the middle of the salon. Her voice was loud, her tone brazen, as if challenging me directly. I raised an eyebrow, taking in her audacious demand. Sure, I can do that. It'll be $250 for a cut and style with me. Her confidence wavered, her eyes widening at the quote. What? I'm not going to spend a quarter of my salary on some hairstyle. Mark, looking defeated and embarrassed, tried to pull her away again. Come on, Anna, let's just go. They left for good this time, with Anna still muttering under her breath about the prices. I watched through the window as they got into an old car that looked like it had seen better days. As the days turned into weeks, the incident with Mark became just another story that added to the rich tapestry of my life's unexpected turns. The salons were thriving, and with each passing day, I found more reasons to look forward with optimism rather than backward with any regret. One crisp morning, while I was arranging the new line of organic hair care products on the shelves, Linda strolled in, her eyes bright with what I knew was another big idea. I've been thinking about how we can expand our brand. What do you think about starting a training academy right here in the salon? We could teach the next generation of stylists, pass on what we've learned. I paused, considering the idea. It was bold, like most of Linda's ideas, but it made sense. That sounds amazing. We've got the space, and it could really set us apart from the competition, I replied, my mind already racing with the possibilities. Exactly my thought. Linda clapped her hands, her enthusiasm infectious. And I want you to lead this project, M. You've got the knack for this, and I trust your judgment completely. The idea of leading such a significant new venture was both thrilling and daunting, but I felt ready for the challenge. I'd love to, Linda. Really, it means a lot that you trust me with this. We spent the next few hours sketching out what the academy could look like, discussing everything from curriculum to licensing. As we talked, I realized how far I had come, from feeling defeated and alone, to charting the future of a business I co-owned. Later that day, as I was tidying up after a busy afternoon, one of our regular clients, Mrs. Harper, approached me. She had been coming to the salon since we opened this location and had always shown an interest in the business side of things. Emily, I've been hearing great things about what you're planning. She began, her tone earnest. You know, my granddaughter is finishing school soon, and she's got a real passion for beauty. Maybe she could join your academy? That would be wonderful, Mrs. Harper, I said, genuinely pleased. We'd be honored to help her start her journey. Once we get everything set up, let's make sure she's one of the first students. Mrs. Harper beamed. Thank you, Emily. It's young women like you who inspire her. She talks about how you turned things around and made a success of yourself. Hearing that filled me with a warm glow of pride and a sense of responsibility. We try to inspire where we can, I replied with a smile. That evening, as I locked up the salon, I thought about the future. There was so much potential, so much yet to achieve. 
The road hadn't been easy, but every challenge had strengthened me, every setback had taught me something valuable.